So I have a cloud dashboard where we send, where I send ping stats and download stats like speedtest.net stats to an app insight to dashboard to compare two different buildings networks to see if they're getting different network performance at a very crude level without spending a ton of money. That actually goes to App Insights where I have a dashboard and what I wanted to do was build a local device use, uh, in this case, it's an M5 stack, which is uh, runs Python actually, MicroPython. Um, and I wanna be able to display the results and I'll give you an idea what that looks like. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out to App Insights or Azure Monitor, run a query against the metrics that are out there pull back the metrics for the last four hours and then generate some statistics on it and display it on this device, right? And so, oh man, that's what happens when you have pilot error. So, and the output will look something like this, right? So it turns out it's super easy. I just got to do an HTTP request to an endpoint, um, telling it which URL I want, what the query is and providing a little bit of credentials. I get back JSON, I can parse the JSON and then I can populate it. And then I've got this set up so that it'll run out requery every 15 minutes, or if you hit this big button at the bottom where it says query app insights for ping time, it'll actually run that query. So I have this thing triggered two different ways, either off of a timer or off of a button. Um, the layout originally looks like this. So basically um, you can see host one, first host. What's gonna happen is a uh, host one field is gonna be replaced by the first host name because I have these two different networks. And then min, average, and max ping will be the query results. And then I have a second host that comes back in the query results. And so that goes in the second area. Whenever a query is run, the last runtime is updated. Um, and then the return code from the last run is done. And you can actually see that here, right? Host one and host two have two different, the Raspberry Pis in this case, have two different names. And I probably just created a security risk by putting that up there, but whatever. And then you can see these two networks have dramatically different performance. The min ping time on one is five milliseconds, the other is 50 milliseconds, and the average is 500 on one, and it's six on the other. So the bottom one is a Fios link, and the top one is a cable motor. All right, so what happens is when we start this thing up, actually, what we're going to do, we're actually, this is the UI we're going to use for this, and I am going to walk through some screenshots and then bring us back here to show us a little bit. But basically, this is the drag and drop UI palette, and then there's a bunch of different functions and each one of these generates a little thingy that you drag out there. And so this was really, for me, it was zero code. I did not write any code or low code for this. I had to understand code, but I didn't have to write any. So uh, the startup for this is super straightforward and probably the most interesting. Well, you know what? So you have a setup function and then, and that's really what runs, right? It's the setup. And in my case, um, I did some event callback. So we could either press a button on the front or a timer every 15 minutes would run it. Basically, we create a Wi-Fi connection and it asks for the configuration on the device. So this way I didn't have to check in a secret for the Wi-Fi, my SID, SSID and password. Uh, I set the time zone for this. And then I know whenever you make a call to app to this remote API, uh, you provide the instance ID on the URL. So it's my URL, whatever the root URL in the cloud is slash your instance ID. And then you provide credentials to show that you have access to that. So this is the instance ID for the app instance I'm going to query against with the query endpoint. And this is the API key. That's my credentials. And I need to put that. This will go in the URL and the API key is going to go in a header. I'll show you that in a minute. And then I have you have to come up with some queries. So they have a query language. So this is actually not SQL. It's the different query language that Microsoft uses in the cloud. I've escaped it and put my common query. And this is like a time diff query. So show me uh, the min, max, and average ping time for the last four hours or two hours or whatever you want it to be. And then this is the base URL for this that I talked about a minute ago. So if you want to get this particular URL, and then I construct the URL here, right? So here we created the app URL by appending the instance IT to it. So this becomes the base URL um, for this. And then we just say that we're going to run the query endpoint and we describe what the query is going to be and we take this uh, insights query and we append it, right? So this is going to be slash API app insights IO, blah, 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 the instance ID slash query, question mark, query equals, and then what we want the query to be. We print that out on the console. It turns out that you can, I'm not going to do it here, but you can actually set up a console. Um, so this device is actually connected to the IDE over the internet. And that means I actually have the serial port open for debugging. So I can open up so I can open up a terminal and get print output from that. And uh, so it's gonna print the URL we're gonna go and it's gonna print the query 
part of that, so it prints two pieces of this. And then it starts up a, a timer for every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, uh, if I set up a callback, this timer will trigger the callback. We clear the host one and host two fields here. So that's these fields here and these fields here, host one and host two. Um, and we clear those and then we run the query. And then what does the query do? Let's look and see if we can make this big enough for people to see. Okay, so what happens here um, is we basically run a query. If you can't see this, it's not that big a deal. I actually have snapshots. Basically, it does a get. It's going to do a get. It sets the color on the bar to zero, and then it runs a query. Uh, and to run the query, it knows the URL we did in the setup, right? That was the thing we did here. We built um, the uh, Insight URL. So this thing is going to go to the Insight URL. This is the icon for a variable. So like if you see a variable, these are how you manipulate those. Um, and then it runs a query. And if we get success, it's going to set the RGB color bar to blue. And then it's going to put the HTTP return code in the field we showed before. That's actually the return code goes here and the last runtime goes there. Um, and then it basically loads that into JSON. Or it loads the get the return response from JSON because it turns out the Azure endpoint actually returns JSON. And we print the JSON to the console. It's great for debugging. Um, and then in this case, what happens is it's a nested, it's a map with an array list. Um, and uh, well, basically these work from the inside out. So the results have a, ta have a map and it has an entry called tables in it. And that's in a list of tables. So when you run a query, you can get multiple tables of results back. So we go and grab the tables from the JSON and we know that there is only one table in this result. So we get the first one. Um, so now we have uh, the whatever was inside the tables, and it turns out that's a set of columns and a set of rows, a map of columns and a map of rows. So basically, we're going to get the row data here. So now we have a list of all the row, rows, and we know that we wanted, um, we know that we're going to have at least two hosts, or it's, this actually works for multiple hosts, but the first two are going to get displayed. And so Basically, what happens here is um, we do some printing on this. But basically, what happens is we put the results in the app insight row. So that holds a list of rows, one for each uh, cloud instance, in this case, each uh, Raspberry Pi that connected. So we have a row for every Raspberry Pi that connects. And we only going to do the first two. So we say, display host results one and display host results two. And that's it. And so, and then if it fails, it sets the return code, the LEDs to red and it sets some other stuff and then it clears the results. So again, this will run this every time the query calls back, it's gonna run um, this method. It's gonna run this uh, function that we talked about, right? And then it's going to run this query and display the results. So let me see, is there anything else I wanted here? Yeah. So this is actually, I'm super lazy with this. Uh, we have four fields here, right? Three, four fields. We're going to set the host name. We're going to set the min ping, average ping, and max ping for each host. I was super lazy about this and I created two functions, one for host one and one for host two. And it knows how to go into the list. Um, into the yeah into the list of, uh, of fields and populate host one and host two super easy all right so how am i going to prove that this works i don't know what i can do this should work i don't know if you'll be able to see it so um if i were to hit i'm going to hit the button here right so if i hit the button it turns yellow that means it went out and it got the data and it turned blue to say it's done so the api calls super quick after you do it right that's like less than a second and yeah, and so it turns out, uh, I know it's actually working, not just flashing colors, because I have this last runtime field here. Let me go back, let's see if I can show you a blow up. I have this last runtime field here, and every time I push the button where the lights flash, uh, that last runtime field gets updated. So I like uh, to know, I, I have like this whole, did it, is it really working or is it dead sort of thing? And that's really all there is to it, right? Um, and so, to run this, basically, I've connected to it on the internet. Um, 
through their website and you could do it on USB if you don't want to have your stuff in the cloud. And then I hit run and I, you probably can't see it here, but basically what's going to happen is it's going to restart this thing in a minute. Well, no, it's not. That's weird. Oh, device code failed because we're offline. You know what? Let's reconnect. This is the demo got a heck, man. This thing worked when I played with it a little while ago. I don't know what it's doing. All right. I will go troubleshoot this Wi-Fi thing. That's not too cool. And uh, we'll see what happens. But that's really everything there is to know about this. You're able to create a, a I don't know, it didn't connect. You're able to create a super simple uh, REST calling service that either posts data or gets data and then displays the result on an M5 stack, all with blocky Python using this UI flow thing.